What is up you guys, it's your boy Alex with Civic Unlimited YT and today I'm going to be going over my experience with the 2020 Honda Civic Si in terms of ownership over the past two months. So without further ado, let's get into it. In so many ways this car is really really close to perfect, but there are a few categories and a few things that make this car far from perfect. So I don't want to necessarily harp on the things that are bad about this car, but if you're looking into this car, you probably want to know the negatives more than you want to know the positives because the positives are why you're already looking into this car. The negatives are what's going to sway you away from this car. And I don't think either of these things, and I say either because I believe there's two at the top of my head, that should actually drive you away and may say, nah, go, you shouldn't do this because the two things I really hate about this car are really not that big and they're actually things you could do to change them and get rid of them. So before we talk about those two things I really don't like, let me just talk about all the things that I really, really love about this car and that I've really experienced over the past two months. So the first is reliability. I have had absolutely no issues with this car so far. It's been great to me and it's just been a pleasure to use and enjoy on a regular day basis as my daily driver. Number two, I would have to say is fuel economy. I usually get about 24 miles per gallon. And this is a sports car. You don't see that. You really just don't see that. It's a four banger and it's really good on gas. It does have a nice power. It's not it's over the top, but it has great power and it's a really fun car to use. Third, I have to say is handling. Handling, that car is literally a track car. That thing is pretty much in the same category as like a Type R. It really does handle very similar to a Type R. And that car is a car you would have so much fun with on the track. And that's a really, really big selling point, And that's a reason to buy that car. The fourth thing is really practicality. This car is super practical, but at the same time, it doesn't look like a grocery getter. It looks unique and it looks different. It's something a Honda has never looked like before. And it really marks a new chapter for Honda. This car really takes it the next step. All the other Hondas, don't get me wrong, are awesome. I love the 8th gens, the 9th gens, the older hatches, everything. I love all the Hondas. But this 10th gen really stood out to me. And that's why I really bought it. And it was an affordable car that gave you really the best performance for the money, gave you the best reliability for the money, gave you the best fuel economy for the money, well, in terms of a sports car. And that's really what sold it for me. And the last thing I really, really love about this car is that six-speed manual transmission. And I know I'm kind of reiterating myself. If you saw the five things that I love about the Honda Civic Si, then you've heard of me say all these things. But if you have not watched that video, you should go check it out. It'll be right up here. And it's a really good video. It's gonna be going in depth a little bit more about what I'm saying right now. Now that I've named the things that I really love about the car, let's talk about the things that I don't love about the car. One, I have to say is rev hang. And I know everybody says it, but it's, it's a fact and it's inevitable and it's the truth. Rev hang really does bother me. And if you don't know what rev hang is, it's basically it happens the most from like the first to second gear. It revs up, and when you let go of the gas normally, the RPMs would go down, but it stays up. So it's a little interesting and it sounds a little funny and it kind of makes shifting from first to second gear kind of a pain. And I don't know, I really don't like that personally, but that's one thing I don't like about the car. And that's something you could easily tune out with a stock map of the K tuner or Honda. It's really easy. And that's definitely, definitely not a deal breaker when buying this car. The second thing that I want to talk about is adaptive sound control. And if you don't know what this is, basically what adaptive sound control is, is it feeds the sound of your exhaust through the cabin, through the speakers of your car. And basically what this does is so that you can kind of hear the car and it gives you that full cabin of feel, it makes you feel like you're in a sports car or a race car. And it's a really cool technology, don't get me wrong, but driving this car on a regular day basis is super annoying with that. I don't like it and I want to find a way to get rid of it. And I've seen a couple videos of people disabling it and that's cool and it's definitely possible, but um, I just don't understand it because I don't know why Honda did this. Although the technology, like I said, is cool. Honda knows that the people buying these cars are gonna mod them out and they're gonna put aftermarket parts. And think about it, having an exhaust system on that car, it's already loud because of the sound from the exhaust going into the cabin. And then you're gonna throw an aftermarket exhaust on it it's gonna be super loud and you're gonna get that drone and then you're gonna get that and it's just a bunch of different things and it's gonna be weird sound. I don't know if that really makes sense, but, but hopefully you know what I mean. So that's really where I'm at after two months of ownership with this car. There's honestly so much to love about this car and not a lot to hate. Unfortunately, the two things that I hate are fixable. These aren't things you have to live with. You could find ways to get rid of them if you really wanna go that deep. Although they bother me, it's not a deal breaker for me. And there's so many worse things that could have, I could have possibly hated about the car, like the reliability, the fuel economy, um, just the overall interface, everything of the car, the interior, the exterior, 
none of that is a concern. All the main components are here. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please drop a like. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, because you definitely don't want to miss out on more content coming up. And uh, comment down below so I can engage with you guys. I love talking to you guys. And we'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.